Hey guys, sorry I haven't made a video in a while. I've been on vacation over in England. Um, I went and saw Buckingham Palace, Big Ben, which turns out to be really small. Um, went to a few football matches, Chelsea vs. Villa, which was a good match, even though Chelsea kicked their butt. So yeah, um, that's why. Right now, I'm doing a new skill, Dungeon Earring, which I think, I mean, it, personally, I think it should have been a mini game because it seems like a mini game, but it's too big to be a mini game. Like, there's too many different levels, too many different items, too many different monsters, and so they sh they made it its own skill. I mean, it was too big to make it a mini game, so. But, yeah, so this is probably what I'm going to be doing for the next while while I get my level up. Um, I currently, my binded item is a Gorgonite Warhammer. And I'm only level 10, which is pretty sad, but I'm on level 5, I think. I'm doing okay. Mostly just doing this by myself, because, I don't know. I don't really want to go with somebody that's going to slow me down, I guess. But, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's okay. It's got a lot of puzzles in it, and, um, walking around, building resources, you know, mining for ore, and then smelting it to make some of your armor, or making arrows, or, um, picking up stuff, selling it, and picking up food and cooking it, stuff like that, so... Um, a lot of people are saying it's pretty much WoW. I've never played WoW, but from what I've seen some pictures, it kind of is feeling that way. But, I don't care. I mean, it's still, still pretty fun, but I know it's going to be a pain in the butt to level, because right now, I'm only getting one level per dungeon, and so it's going to take forever to level this thing. So, yeah. I don't really know what all these foods and items are yet. And I probably will never know, like, what the rating is or whatever. Um, so pretty much what you gotta do to start this thing is head out your way on over to Al Karid. Uh, it's free to play and members, so that's, uh, that's good, so I'm free to play, got another skill. So then you go behind the Al Karid bank, and you board the Fremnik boat, and it takes you to this island full of snow and castles and stuff. And so you just go, oh my goodness, hmm, Oh, I wish I could find both of them, that stinks, darn it, oh well. Anyway, so you go on the boat and it takes you to the island, and then you just walk up the island thing, you go up to the main castle, and you'll have a ring, this little ring over here, the ring of kinship, and you go to open party interface. And then you just hit, it'll be like a form party or join party or you'll be invited or something. And you keep just going on and on. And yeah. So you can either do it by yourself, which I'm doing, or you can do it with some friends or a group of people or whatever. Um, inside the dungeon, the loot is shared. So both people will see it at the same time. Both people will see all the drops at the same time. So if you go with a group of people, that you might not get what items you want because they're going to get to it first. So. Um, so then just keep going on and then there will be a few puzzles you have to do, like you have to move the statues in correct placement with the other statues or you have to um, make the statues hold the right kind of armor or something like that. That's as far as those are the ones who I've gotten. And then finally at the end, you have to kill a boss. And whether it be the Beth Muse, Beth, I don't know how to say that. I'll show you. Gluttonous Behemoth. Um, with him, depending on how many people you got, if you're alone, there will be one decaying body in the corner. And you're going to want to stand in front of that decaying body. If you don't, if his health gets low, he's going to start eating that and heal off of it. So you got to stand in front of it. Astia Frostwim. Um, she uses magic attack, so she freezes you, so make sure, no matter what, when you start off, that you have a melee, 
a range, or a magic. You have to have two styles, so just in case she freezes you, you can attack her no matter what. Um, Icy Bones, I haven't had him yet, but I've had Luminous and Ice Fiend, and he's pretty tough. Um, I underestimated him being over 124 for me. Um, he doesn't attack where he goes inside his ice shield where you can't attack him, and he sends icicles at you, so you have to keep running and running around so that they don't hit you. Um, so those are the bosses. And just remember that whenever you're doing this game, that you pick up pretty much everything that you see, everything that looks valuable, or coins, or anything, because you're going to have to use the coins to buy other supplies that you need. Sometimes you'll have to burn down a door, or cut down a door that's blocked or something. So you're going to need to buy the tools to do that, and so you're going to need to collect the money. So just make sure you do that. Um, that's pretty much it. You just keep going, keep building up on the floors, keep gaining levels. Yeah. Um, whenever you get a rune essence drop, by the way, make sure you go back to the smug. Oh, the smuggler. Uh, the smuggler is located right when you start off. He's in the main cage. The first two levels or one level or something, he will have no stock. And from then on, his stock will increase every level of what he has or what he new stuff he has. So his stock's gonna increase. And then, in the beginning, you'll have like six or seven tables set up around him. These little tables over here. And they will have items on them, and you just collect the items. And then use them. Um, and then whatever you don't need, sell to him. But remember, keep a bow and your arrows on you. And so whatever you pick up, and if you, like if you get the rune essence, come back here. Uh, room craft them on this altar and make them into natures or law rooms and then you just sell them back to them. Or if you get ore, smelt it in this furnace and make it in whatever armor you want or spinning wheel for um, dehyde or something. So it's pretty much combat and using resources. So just make sure you're completely looking through the piles of loot so it's like I didn't. I didn't make these gloves. I didn't make these coins. And I didn't make these coins. And another cool thing is the drops stay on the ground. They will not disappear. So no matter what, the drops will always be there. So say you need to restock on food, you can just come back and get more food. I have no clue what I'm doing. Food? Okay, there it is. Yeah, don't be like me and forget all your drops. Um, when you look at an item, if you want to know what level it is, you examine it, and it'll say tier 9 or tier 2, tier 7 or something, or um, stuff like that. The higher the tier, the better it is, but also the higher the tier, the harder the level it is to use it. Um, take summoning, for example. Oh, wait. Let's take, let's take strength. Tier 11 is the highest, and it's 99, 99, so. And it goes down my level. So. So just, you'll want to pick up the ones with the highest tier level on it, because it's the freaking door. Oh my gosh, I'm not even okay. The majority of these monsters are easy until you get to the boss level. Uh, then some t most of the time they'll just have three little under 90 monsters. Sometimes in one room there'll be one monster at level 130 or something. It's not the boss, but he's easier than the boss. So it's not that hard. And the rewards? Um, some new armor, uh, experience points. That's all I really know so far. New armor, new robe armor, new free to play rewards too so that's it um hopefully I'll be making probably not I probably won't be making any videos unless it's like dungeoneering ones or something because I will be doing this for quite some time yep. alright well good luck on your adventures um and yeah take care guys bye